this video, we're going to look at how we can actually find the inverse of a function that's given to us. Now, to kind of get an idea of what's going on, I want to look at these function machines again. Let's say we've got this function machine f of x, and then the function machine that we're trying to create, the inverse of x. And we know if we take some number like 3 and dump it in the function machine, we'll get something out, maybe a 2. The idea of an inverse is if we plug that 2 into the inverse, we get out what went into the first function. We get out the 3 again. But we're going to do this process with variables instead of numbers. The idea is x goes in, y comes out of the regular function machine. For the inverse, though, the y goes in, and the x comes out. It's switched around. The y goes in, and the x comes out. That's the idea we use to find an inverse. To find the inverse of a function, we will switch the x and y, and then solve it for the y. This gives us the backwards function, with the y going in and the x coming out, or the inverse function. Now, one important thing to note is the notation f of x, g of x, h of x, that represents the part that is y. So if we see h of x equals negative 3 over x minus 1 minus 2, we need to think about that as y equals negative 3 over x minus 1 minus 2. And to find the inverse function, we're going to switch the x and y around. So instead of y equals, it's now going to be x equals. Negative 3 over, instead of x, it's going to be y minus 1 minus 2. And now all we have to do is solve this equation for y to get our solution. Well, to do that, first we have to get rid of this lone minus 2 out here. We're going to move the 2 over by adding 2 to both sides. That's going to give us x plus 2 equals negative 3 over y minus 1. We know we can clear the denominator, get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by y minus 1. The denominator. Denominators divide out on the right side, so we have x plus 2 times y minus 1 equals negative 3. Remember, we're trying to get the y alone, so we need to get rid of the part with x in it. We'll divide out the x plus 2 group. Those are gone. And now we have y minus 1 equals negative 3 over x plus 2. And simply adding 1 to both sides, we'll get the y alone. y is equal to negative 3 over x plus 2 plus 1. Maybe making it in really good notation here, this is the inverse of h of x. So we would write that with the notation, the little negative 1, meaning inverse h inverse of x is equal to negative 3 over x plus 2 plus 1. This is the inverse function. It undoes what the first function, h of x, did. Let's try that strategy again, where we switch x and y and solve for y. With g of x, we know that represents the y, so we really have y equals 5 times the cube root of x minus 6 plus 4. And to find the inverse, we're going to switch the order that x and y work in the function machine. y becomes x equals 5 times the cube root of x becomes y minus 6 plus 4. And then we start solving for y. Peeling away the layers, we'll start by subtracting 4 from both sides. x minus 4 equals 5 times the cube root of y minus 6. Divide out that 5. And we get the fraction x minus 4 over 5 equals the cube root of y minus 6. Still trying to get the y alone. We want to get rid of a cube root. The opposite of taking a root is to take a power. We'll do the third power on both sides, as third power and third root are inverses. We now have x minus 4 over 5 cubed is equal to y minus 6. 
Adding 6 to both sides, we'll get the y alone. And y is equal to x minus 4 over 5 cubed plus 6. Or using our notation of inverses, this is g of x, so we'll say g inverse of x is equal to this function, x minus 4 over 5 cubed plus 6. Inverse functions work opposite as the regular function. y goes in, x comes out. So to find the inverse function, we'll switch x and y and solve for y.